Is it on this computer? Love you guys. What installment? <laughs> what installment are we in? 191, right? Is it? So I was right? I think it's 191. 87 was the last one we did in the theater. We This is the fourth one virtual, right? Yeah. So, oh, so, so our last one live was the murder code. 187. Is that the murder code? Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah, so 187 was the last one live in February yeah. at the theater. All right, I'm gonna open. Have fun, everybody. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Good night, everyone. Have a good time. Uh, bye. Welcome to the LA Cafe plays, everybody. I'll have our other panelists turn their cameras off as everybody comes in, and we have four brand new world premiere plays for you all this evening. They were written in four and a half hours. They were rehearsed in four and a half hours. And now you are here for the main event. We're very grateful to have you all as I see the audience trickling in. Um, we did 187 installments of the LA Cafe Plays Live. That was the last installment before COVID and 187 I guess also coincides with the murder code which seems sort of ironic since we haven't been in the theater since. Um, we are very excited to be getting back to the theater. We are hoping that we'll be there sometime after 4th of July. Uh, the city of Santa Monica gave us a significant rent abatement on Tuesday evening after a long, hard fight and advocacy push. Uh, we feel confident that the Ruskin will reopen some point after the 4th of July, and we can't wait to see you all there. So without further ado, this is our four, This is our fifth virtual cafe play. We will be online until it's safe to be back in the theater, which we hope is really soon. Um, our theme, this show, by the way, I think uh, it, it, it should be really credited to is that Nicole Millar produced this show. So if I seem more lost than normal, it could either be my advancing age or the fact that I didn't do as much as I usually do during the cafe plays. So I know Nicole picked the theme and for the life of me, I think it's all is not lost. So the great, great producer, Nicole Millar, great stage manager, Nicole Millar, great person, Nicole Millar. I, I, don't, I really can't uh, thank Nicole enough for everything that she does for the Ruskin. We would not at all be here without you, Nicole. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the first play is written by the great Steve Mazur. Steve, turn your camera on. And it was directed by the incomparable Paige Siegel. Paige, turn your camera on. Starring the comedic duo of Paul Shackman and Jay Damian Anastasio, who I'm sure you've seen together before and you will see together again. So without further ado, Tell a Shrink by Steve Mazur, directed by Paige Siegel and starring Paul Shackman and Jay Damian Anastasio. Enjoy. Why is this happening? Why to me? Why me? Hello. Thank you for calling Tell a Shrink your online psychiatric service. I am Dr. Vank. May I ask with whom I am speaking? Ray, Ray Phillips. Ray, Ray Phillips. No, no, it's just, it's one Ray, Ray Phillips. Like James Bond? James, James Bond. I, I think this character said Bond, James Bond. Yeah, that's what I said. May I ask uh, what I can do for you today? Isn't it obvious? Just look at me! I'm afraid I, I cannot see you. Of course you can't see me because I'm invisible! I'm invisible! Invisible? Yes! And that can mean only one thing. I died and now I'm just a ghost doomed to wander the earth unseen forever. Or, or maybe I'm a vampire. Or, or perhaps uh, you're it is just the camera on the computer. 
come again. The camera on the computer, perhaps it is uh, not in focus or maybe pointing in the wrong direction. Oh my God. <laughs> not visible. I exist. I exist. Oh, Dr. Wank, you're a genius. It's Vonk. And I wouldn't go so far as saying I'm a genius. No, don't argue with me. I know a genius when I see it. Oh my God, I can't tell you how happy I am that I called you. <laughs> as am I. Uh, now, was this the uh, only reason you contacted Teleshrink, Mr. Phillips? Oh, no, call me Ray Ray. Uh, uh, no, actually, invisibility is the least of my problems. <laughs> I'm losing it, Doc. I'm losing it. I'm, I'm, I'm going cray cray here. <laughs> I see, I see. Before we continue, uh, may I ask, how would you like to pay for this session? I, well, I'm not sure. Does my insurance cover this? I would think so. Oh, okay. Uh, let me go. Let me go find my policy. I'm with Kaiser. Uh, here, I think I got my card right here. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Uh, okay. Write this down. Policy number H, as in uh, uh, Hercules. 76-4297-G as in gonad, V as in uh, vagina. Have you heard of Kaiser? I think he was in charge of Germany before Hitler. I am aware of this company. Now, how may I help you today? Oh God, it's this lockdown, Doc. I've been self-immolating for the last year and I've totally lost my, my ability to, to interact with other people. I think you mean uh, self-isolating. Uh, self-immolating would be as if you were caught in flames and on fire for a long period of time. Yes, 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 that is what I've been doing. There is no need to scream, sir. Oh, was I screaming? I had no idea. This is understandable. When forced to be alone for an extended period of time, it may be difficult to remember how to modulate one's voice. May I suggest that you sit back and lower your volume just a bit? Sit back. How exactly am I supposed to do that? Uh, well, I would recommend a chair. A chair? Are you... Absolutely sure about this, Dr. Wank? It's Zonk. And yes, I think a chair would work very well. Well, you are the expert, the rapist. <laughs> but, but is it, I did, no, no, it is therapist, not the rapist, therapist, one word. Whatever. I'll get a chair. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, this chair is upside down. You, you must turn it right side up. Oh my God. Oh, that's why that, that, that has hurt me so much. Oh yes, that is much more comfortable. <laughs> now, how's this for volume? This is still a little loud, maybe. Uh, take it down a little. Like this, like this a little bit. Now this is too 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 low. Maybe somewhere in the middle. In the middle. Um, something like 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 this. Perfect. <laughs> Doctor, I'm just so embarrassed. I just I'm I just don't know if I can go back to the real life yet. Not not to worry, Mr. Phillips. We, we are social creatures by nature. And this pandemic, it, it has taken a, a terrible toll on our usual human interactions. But as you gradually become more and more re-engaged with society, I, I promise you will feel your foothold again. You will, you will feel this strength and confidence come back. This of this, I assure you, Mr. Phillips. Doctor, you have been such a great comfort to me. Um, I would like to continue with these sessions, if that's okay with you. I really would like your help 
to kind of getting myself back into real life. This would be my pleasure. I will just have to uh, call my assistant, Greta, and she will work out the schedule with you. Oh, Greta! What is it now, you perv? I told you I'm not going to touch you down there anymore. Uh -huh, not Greta, no. We have a new tele-client today. It's uh, Mr. Phillips. Oh, really? A tele-client? Hi, Mr. Phillips. How are you? He would like to schedule more appointments that to make this transition back to work again and out of the pandemic much more smooth for him. Okay? Okay, Mr. Phillips, what's your schedule look like? Actually, I'm, I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you, Dr. Wank. It's Vank. It's Dr. Vank. I think he's right. He should call you Dr. Wank, you wanker. This is your fault. I have lost another patient because of you. That's three this week. Oh, sure, you want to blame me, you stupid wanker? Go ahead, blame me. I'm just going to leave. No, Greta, you can't leave me. I, I cannot do this without you. Greta, I love you, Greta. All right. That was Teladoc by Steve Mazur. And it was directed by Paige Siegel and it was starring Paul Shackman and Damien Anastasio. And our next play is Better Than Normal, written by Joe Galliani. Joe, turn yourself on, which is a weird thing to tell somebody to do. We're gonna learn a different phrase for that. And it was directed by Michael Schwartz. If you could turn your camera on, Michael. Thank you guys for your work today. And this play is starring Arthur Davis and Tiffany Bank. And without further ado, enjoy Better Than Normal. Hi. Hey. Hi. Nikki, uh, sorry, I'm I'm AJ with CBS Cares. It is so nice to meet you. Um, thank you for taking the time to meet with me today. All of us here are excited to be partnering with Chevrolet on this new amazing opportunity. Oh, it's so great to meet you, AJ. Our community relations team is so excited to start this new first project with you. Oh, listen, this is the first of many projects in the major urban media markets. And thanks to General Motors, <laughs> major advertising buys across our CBS industry leading platforms. <laughs> wow, that's, that's, that's amazing. That translates to over $5 million in funding for my community project. Thank you so much, that's so awesome. I mean, hey, that's our business model. GMs add total 50 million and we get 10% of that to fund legacy projects to make a lasting impression on our key target markets and uh, AJ this is going to be epic <laughs> it's going to be so epic yes <laughs> uh, and and maximize our mutual brands eyeballs exposures and effectiveness based on our win 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 plan for Chevrolet CVS and the community we call it CCC <laughs> oh CCC yeah. Cover. Thanks. So usually we we fund a lot of uh, Little League, Girl Scouts, YMCA, uh, Boys and Girls Club, um, Police Athletic League projects. So not so much PAL anymore because of you know police funding. Yeah, I I, I hear that. Um, and 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 PAL is not on our approved list. Okay, so who is on the approved list? Well, let's let's start first with the campaign theme and the goals the marketing team created for the urban summer of better than normal. Hashtag a BTN. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah, well see, our mission is to make the hashtag BTN go viral. The IE, the Chevy Bolt EV is BTN. The CBS summer lineup is BTN. <laughs> I see. Um, okay, so 
The goal is to drive our untapped urban market demographic to both test drive the newly refreshed Bolt electric car and the CBS summer lineup by funding nonprofit groups who matter most to the community. Exactly. So, okay, so the first step will include you putting together a list of target groups and projects and, and we'll supply them with the CBS app so they can earn extra money for watching our shows and we can track them. <laughs> track them. Okay. Targets is a good name for them. <laughs> say, say what? Look, AJ, um, I've been working in the nonprofit world for about six years now. And um, right. this program, yeah, this program, uh, it just seems a little exploitive. Uh, for what we're used to, um, we, we take more of an, a subtle approach and we usually just like hang banners with our Chevy logo. Uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to turn off the recording for, for a minute, uh, okay? Okay. All right, give me a second here. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, but are, are you saying that your untapped urban market demographic isn't jonesing to see Tom Selleck in Blue Bloods or Annie Potts in Young Sheldon or Alice and Janie in Mom? Um, no. Aren't those all old white people? Well, yeah, they are. Okay, but, but what about Queen Latifah as the equalizer and LL Cool J on NCIS? Oh, or Cedric the Entertainer on The Neighborhood. Okay, <laughs> AJ, you're actually shitting me, right? I mean, I don't know you, but um, you're like punking me, right? This is a joke? Fuck! <laughs> I wish I was, but uh, listen, this is my job. All right. And this is the best that the marketing team could come up with. All right. So, I mean, <laughs> who knows better than Brad or Howard or Seth, what people of color are watching or how to reach them? Okay. Well, you think that sucks, AJ? Who knows better than Barbara, Kevin, or Debbie in Chevy advertising about how many young working professionals want to drive a $40,000 electric car. Yeah, but you're forgetting we got the power of better than normal working for us. Hashtag a BTN. Oh my God. Oh my God. The urban summer of better than normal. What the? So they're aimed at the markets and demographics with the highest level of COVID death rates and the lowest lo lowest rate of vaccinations. What the hell do they think normal is? <laughs> uh, okay, well, here at CBS Cares, normal means I'm the only person of color sitting in this meeting. Oh. <laughs> I mean, or I, what I would like to call moments of awkward anxiety. I know. I know, AJ, I, I, I share that same anxiety. I'm usually, it's usually the exact same thing here at Chevy. Anytime we have a partnership meeting, I'm always the only other person of color with the person of color represented mm. at their partnership. Mm. And at least you didn't ask me where my people are from. So thank oh, you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's, it's like we're always tasked with producing some lame ass vanilla version fantasy of what being woke means. Whoa. Look, yeah. It's like they're deliberately gaslighting us, right? Yeah. And all we're just trying to do is do the right thing. AJ, you have no idea how invisible and unheard I feel as a woman of color here. It's insane. I'm sure it's worse than being a black man in a world of Karens and Caucasian cops who want to believe that Oh, I must work at CVS, the drugstore. No, 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 not, not CBS, the television city. Do you wonder why I love working from home? No, I don't wonder because I also don't love, I also love not going to the downtown office every day. Although don't get me started the fact that my neighborhood right now is becoming mad gentrified. You see, that's, that's, that's their God 
freaking given white Angelo Saxon right as the true American ethnic cleansing, land stealing, kidnapping, slave owning bastards in their fucking, ah, the fucking privilege. It's what their fucking privilege allows. Oh God. CCC. CCC, honey. CCC. So, AJ, how do we take these $5 million to fight white minority rule and get some justice? Oh, that's not happening. Like, I, I'm not looking to go to jail. But what I am looking to do is make bank while I position myself to move up. Because see, one by one, these pale face fools will fuck themselves into losing their jobs. <laughs> okay. Well, we might have to wait a long time for that, AJ. Or we might as well wait for men to start listening to women. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't even know you, but I'm I'm not your black martyr. But I will say this, all is not lost. It isn't? You could have fooled me. No, no, it, it, it isn't, Nikki, because listen, we can't directly fund Black Lives Matters and we can't abolish ICE groups, okay? But what we can do is we can fund food and health and education projects in our communities. We, we can strengthen and enable our freedom fighters. That's what we can do. Mm. But we got to pimp out MacGyver and the unicorn to funnel the funding to them. That's right. Yes, that's what we got to do. And we have to make them believe that better than normal. Why not murdering our fucking coworkers in marketing? Can you do that? Go ahead and start the recording. Are you sure? Because I'm dead serious about this. Yeah, I'm sure. Thanks for explaining that, AJ. Now I, I totally get it. I totally get it. I can really see it all clearly. Wow. It, and it is much better than normal. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag BTN is going to be everywhere. This oh, summer. that is perfect. This is going to be so much fun. Let's go over the step-by-step -step actualization marketing came up with, okay? It's totally comprehensive and creative. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. That was Joe Galliani's Better Than Normal, directed by Michael Schwartz, starring Arthur Davis and Tiffany Bank. And the next play Bill and Tom, please turn on your cameras, along with Rupert Hitzig. The next play is DAA, written by Tom Sage and Pill Robertson, directed by the fabulous Rupert Hitzig. And I don't see Tom, but it's not the first time Tom's been shy. Uh, Bill and Tom are the writers of Paradise, a bluegrass musical. And we loved working on that show with you guys. And Stephanie Curly Schwartz is here. And Stephanie Curly Schwartz has been one of the greatest set designers that we've ever worked with. I think what gets lost sometimes throughout this pandemic is, you know, fortunately for us, we get to still do things virtually. It's been hard for her to do her magic. So on behalf of all of us in the LA theater community, I want to say that we cannot wait to see Stephanie Curly Schwartz's amazing sets again. Right on. Right so on. this next play by Bill and Tom, directed by Rupert, is starring uh, Jennifer Gianna and Kevin Alai. And without further ado, DAA. can't wait to kill someone. 
on stage, of course. You're preaching to the choir. I can't wait to take my uh, go deep inside of myself and rip that smug mask of civility off of you. On stage, of course. Of course. Drama's everything. Live for drama. I live drama. I know. I met your girlfriend. How dare you? I have never been so insulted in my entire life. I find that hard to believe. I really hope that this cafe play we're going to do tomorrow is a hardcore drama. I really need to emote, express my inner turmoil, the darkest recesses of my soul. Oh, that's good stuff. I need more of that. You know, I really want to show these people what I can do, but I'm not just a pretty face. No, you're not. I mean, of course you're not. Make them laugh, make them cry. What do people go to the theater for? An emotional exercise. I am a servant of the people. I have never forgotten that. Mary Pickford. Was she in Game of Thrones? She could have been. Mikey and John told me I was overly dramatic and didn't take direction. I won't let them be right. I'll show them. I'm a student of truth and my truth is drama. I live and breathe it. <laughs> Just today, I was in the 10 items or less line and the miscreant in front of me was attempting to purchase not 10, not 11, but 12 items. <laughs> yes, a dozen purchases where there should be but 10. Was it just a mere miscalculation on his part or something more sinister? Diabolical, if you will, directed at me. I chose the latter, saw through his subterfuge and beat him about the head and body with a glazed ham that I fortuitously smuggled in the front of my trousers. He'll rue this day. Seems more like comedy to me. <laughs> as I reflect on my events of the day. I faked my own drowning death this morning to escape my abusive controlling husband and relocated to a small town under an assumed name, only to have him find me and force me to gun him down in cold blood to save my own life. It was over the top dramatic. That happened this morning? Wait a minute, that, that, that's Julia Roberts' storyline in Sleeping with the Enemy. Is it or is it mine? Let the critics decide. Willie Nelson wrote Sweet Dreams, but it's Patsy Cline's song. True, very true. Hmm, make it your own. Now that's good direction. Oh God, I really, Freaking hope this cafe play is a heart-stopping, tear-jerking, depends-filling drama. One can only hope. You know, I'm going to act circles around you. <laughs> Your words are like a spear piercing through my very soul. Oh, that's good stuff. I want more of that. Indeed, I felt inspired. You bring out the worst in me. What? And the best. For there is no bottom to my despise for you. That's why they paired us together. Our synergy for drama is far greater than the sum of our hatred. Or something like that. Conflict is drama. And how people deal with conflict shows you the people they truly are. Stephen Moyer. Stephen Moyer in HBO series, True Blood. Yes, the vampire. What's more dramatic than being a vampire? Being a conflicted vampire. <laughs> Drama is life with adult bits cut out. Alfred Hitchcock. I can't stand life's dull bits. Drama is very important in life. You have to go on with a bang. You never want to go out with a whimper. <laughs> Everything can have drama in it if it's done right. Even a pancake. Order me a stack of those pancakes. Uh. Where is everybody? 
How dare they make us wait? It's just like them to leave us dangling in the wind. Mm. Let's show them. We'll start the meeting without them. I need this meeting badly. I can't do a cafe play without it. All is not lost. It only takes two for a meeting. Um, okay, screw them. Let's start. Hi, and welcome to Drama Addicts Anonymous, D-A-A. -A. My name is Kevin, and I'm a recovered drama addict. You're not all that recovered. <laughs> <sighs> How oh, dare you attack my recovery? I would never do a thing like that to you because I care about people's feelings. So anyway, um, it's been about uh, five seconds since my last drama and I'm losing my shit here. You are a drama queen. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> All right, that was Tyler, you're early. We love the live because you never know what's gonna happen when we're live, even virtually live. But that was DAA by Tom Sage and Bill Robertson directed by Rupert Hitzig and starring Jennifer Gianna and Kevin Alai. And the before I introduce the last play of the night, on top of uh, us being very grateful to the city of Santa Monica for offering the theater rent abatement that is gonna allow us to reopen, I wanna thank two of our board members who are here this evening, Eddie Howdigy and Christine Kaplan. Um, without them, we wouldn't be here either. So thank you very much to them. And also to all of you for uh, keeping us uh, yeah, you guys give us the inspiration to keep going. So I can't, uh, I wish I could see you all, but I can't tell you how much uh, the Ruskin audience means to us all. So uh, thank you very much. The last play, and I got to thank John because uh, John has uh, done a lot to have a theater for 20 years. And uh, the fact that it looks like we're gonna keep going is a huge testament to him. Um, the last play is called Lost by Rachel Hardesty, who I don't believe is here, but it's directed by Hamilton Matthews, who can turn on his camera and wave hello. The great Hamilton Matthews, jack of all trades at the Ruskin Theater. We love Hamilton, and this play stars Angela Stern and Tyler Meredith. So without further ado, let's get lost. Hey there, beautiful. Hey, love. So good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. So where have you been, Mr. Mysterio? Uh, oh, you know. Mm, no, no, I, I don't know. I mean, you've been really hard to get a hold of lately. And so I'm just kind of wondering, you know, what you've been cooking up? Yeah, yeah I'm sorry about that. You know, don't take it personally. You've always been my favorite person to talk to, and I, I really appreciate you checking up on me. I've just been kind of busy for the last month or so. Busy? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I thought that you left your job. Did you find a new one? No. I... Well, let's just say I've been making preparations. Okay. Preparations for, for what? Why are you being so secretive? <laughs> Come on, just out with it, right? Angela, I don't want to be here anymore. Okay, so so you're moving. That's exciting. Where are you going? I don't know. Well, what's your plan? Well, I sold most of my stuff. Oh, so this is kind of like a hit the road type of thing. Yeah, kind of, except I sold the car too. <laughs> So are we bus or hitchhiking? I mean, that sounds kind of dangerous, Ty. Yeah, I, I appreciate your concern for my safety. Well, I love you, knucklehead. <laughs> I love you too. Now, Angela, when I said that I didn't want to be here anymore, I meant that I, I don't want to be on this planet. I'm going to kill myself. Tyler, no. 
Yes. Yeah, I've thought about it for a long time, and yes. No. No. No, Tyler, I mean, you've been microdosing psilocybin. I, I thought that was working, right? Yeah, it's working great. I'm, I'm, I'm totally at peace with my decision. In fact, I haven't been this happy in a long time just knowing that I'm going to leave. Ty, this is crazy. Okay? No, it's actually the most sane I've ever been. I, look, I don't know why anyone would want to stay here. Because there's so much beauty in the world? Yeah, there is. Yeah, that, that's a lot of what my preparation's been about. I've been, I've been traveling and, uh, you know, just trying to appreciate all the beauty on the planet. You know, the forests, the lakes, the waterfalls, the beaches, even the birds and all the animals. There's just so much beauty. And why would you want to leave? Humans. I hate humans and I don't want to be around them anymore. You're serious. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've spent 40 years of my life just dealing with humans and all it's gotten me is this hatred for humanity. I mean, the selfishness, the, the entitlement. Yeah, but there's still a lot of good in humans, right? Not really. You're good. I, I love you. I love talking to you, but Besides you and maybe a couple other people, humans are just a bunch of selfish assholes who are killing the planet. And I just, I want off. Hey, maybe you should come stay with me for a little while, okay? I appreciate the offer. I really do, but I've, I've already made up my mind and there's nothing you can do about it. I can't believe that we're having this conversation. I know, I know it's a lot for you to take in right now, but I, I'd appreciate it if you could respect my decision. Well, I don't. It's incredibly selfish. No, no, Jeff Bezos is selfish, all right? I'm, I'm just doing what's right for me. I, I just want off the planet, so it has one less selfish asshole mouth to feed. Yeah, well, what about me? What about, what about me? I mean, what about what I, you're taking yourself away from me. I know I thought a lot about you. I thought tons about you. And well, you're going to be getting a little box in the mail after I'm gone. And it's going to contain some of my personal possessions that I thought you might like to have, something to remember me by. And it's also going to contain some money. And it's not a lot, but something where you can buy yourself something nice. And You know what I don't want? I don't want it. I don't want it. Then throw it away or, or give it away. I, I really don't care. Tyler, please, can we just talk about this a little bit more? I don't see the point. I mean, I, I still can't believe that we're having, when did it, when did it get this bad? I mean, when did you make this decision? A couple of months ago when I buried my friend. I remember I was sitting there looking down at him and I was jealous. I was so jealous. He didn't have to do it anymore. He didn't have to wake up every day and go to the job that he hated just so he could pay rent in some shitty apartment. And he didn't have to sit there and smile and fake a conversation with some people that he didn't even have to talk to. He didn't have to do any of it. He just was at rest. He was at peace. And I was so, I was so jealous. But he's dead. I mean, he can't laugh. He can't dance. He can't he can't make love, he can't travel the world. Well, I wasn't doing much of that myself. Have you thought about how you're gonna do this? Yeah, I got myself a gun. Tyler, no. No, I mean, can we just please, please talk about this a little no, bit more, okay? It's fine, and don't come over, okay? I don't want you to. That's why I was calling. I just don't, I don't want you to see my body. I wouldn't want to put you through that. <laughs> what about what you're already putting me through? What about what you're already putting me through, Tyler? I mean, please, just please. Like, there is so much beauty left in the world. I promise you there is. 
there is so much joy to be had. I promise you, just, just hang in there, okay? Because I know that you're struggling. I get it, but there, but all is not lost, okay? Just hang in. I've been lost for years, years and years now. But I'm so happy just knowing what I'm going to do. I'm going to come get you. No, I don't. Okay, look. I want you to understand. I don't. I don't understand. I don't. I know. I, okay, I'm sorry. Look, this isn't your fault. Okay, I love you. And there's nothing you could have done to stop me. All right? But I'm just so happy now, knowing that I'm going to go. So just let me go. Tyler, please don't, just please. Please let me come get you, okay? Just please. Goodbye, Angela. No, Tyler, please. All right, that was Lost by Rachel Hardesty and amazingly performed by Angela Stern and Tyler Meredith, directed by Hamilton Matthews. And now, curtain call. All participants, please turn on your cameras. Yay. Good job, everybody. I do, come over here. Yay. Congratulations, everyone. Mikey, give me permission. Dude, that was so good, oh. everybody. Oh, man. Good job, everybody. Great job. <laughs> really good work. And now, there's a cool exercise we do after virtual performances where I go around and tell everybody what I hate about them. And I'm going to start with Kevin. I'm <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> Thank you all uh, for tuning in and we will see you next month. Yeah. For the cafe. Great job. Great job, everybody. Yay. Thank you, Thank you all for showing up. You. Hey, Masha. Bravo. Masha. Masha Great job, everybody. Great job, everyone. Job. Thank, you. Thank you, guys. Beautiful work. Take care of Awesome job, everybody. Job. Later. Later.